This is the Ricoh Theta Z1. I've been using it for the past few weeks and I think it's the best camera for 360 photos ever released and I'm gonna show you why. Let's go. So let's quickly go through the specs of this camera. I'm just gonna do it very quickly, then we're gonna have a look at some photos shot with this camera to see really what it can do. So the Ricoh Theta Z1 features two one-inch back illuminated sensors that can shoot 23 megapixel photos and 4K videos. It features four microphones which can shoot ambisonic audio. It has 19 gigabytes of internal memory and a battery that will last around about an hour of continuous video footage or it will shoot around about 600 photos. It can also live stream in 4K to places like Facebook and YouTube and it costs around about $999 or 850 pounds. Now I know when this was announced a couple of months ago, people were quite shocked at how much it costs. $999 is a lot of money and people were like, well, I mean, it's only got 4K video, shoots 23 megapixel photos, why is it so expensive? Guys, this is mostly designed for a professional use. It's not really designed for consumers. It's meant for business to business. The kind of people who are gonna buy this are surveyors, architects, uh, people who create virtual tours of buildings, people who need, a, in a professional sense, um, rather than, you know, taking it on holiday or using it as, you know, to, for YouTube videos and stuff. Obviously, it's available on the open market and uh, anyone can buy it, but that is why it's so expensive. And I'm kind of reviewing it from a point of view where it will compete with more DSLRs and professional cameras rather than the likes of the Ricoh Theta V or the Insta 361X. So the Z1 has three features that I think makes it pretty much nearly perfect for uh, professional photography, certainly in 360. Number one is those one inch sensors that I talked about that the Theta Z1 has, two of them here. The one inch sensors allow this camera to shoot much higher quality photos than pretty much any other consumer level camera that's out right now. And probably even better than some professional ones that use much lower quality lenses. Most 360 cameras, even very expensive ones, use a quarter inch or one, I think it's either quarter or third inch sensors. Um, and that's pretty poor quality. No matter how many you use, even if it has 10 of them, the fact that they are just uh, a quarter inch sensors, they won't be able to pick up as much light or detail as one inch sensors. Those um, These are literally three times or four times the size of sensors that you'll find in cameras like the Theta V. You can capture a lot more detail and a lot more light, so especially in low light and indoor conditions, this camera is way ahead of the pack. Hopefully you can see how good the dynamic range is, how good the light and color is. That's why these one inch sensors are worth the price because they just do increase the quality of the photos so much. So you can get a lot more detail and a lot more accuracy rather than uh, the kind of odd light balance issues that you get with many other 360 cameras. The second reason why this camera is also for photos is the fact that it shoots DNG RAW. Now I cannot overstate how good this is and how much of a game changer it is in terms of uh, capturing the best quality photos that you possibly can. So the combination of those one inch sensors and the fact that they can shoot RAW photos, DNG RAW, just opens it up so much, uh, so much details captured in the lenses and um, so much more room for editing. You can get some really, really, really fine details even if you're massively overexposed or underexposed. Being able to edit that in DNG RAW, I mean, you can fix it, you can make it look so good. I mean, I'm not the best editor in the world, but I managed to get some very good photos out of this camera just very quickly. So when you shoot with this camera, you have the option to shoot a JPEG and a RAW photo uh, together. They do it, sim it does it simultaneously. And you can see the difference here between the two, the G DNG RAW, and I've d I have edited that. It's not come out of the camera like that, but I've edited this RAW photo and Compared to the JPEG, I mean, it's just completely different. It looks like it's shot with a completely different camera. The amount of detail you can get, the amount of uh, dynamic range you can kind of squeeze out of it with the DNG RAW file is amazing. To be honest, I really can't see why you would shoot in any other mode other than DNG RAW. Uh, because that's where you're gonna get the maximum detail and that's where you're gonna get the most out of this camera. However, that leads me on to the third reason why this is an awesome camera and it's not really anything to do with the camera, but it's to do with some software that Ricoh has developed for Adobe Lightroom that allows you to edit your raw DNG files from this camera. I mean, you know the circular fisheye one, so before it's been stitched together, you can put that in Adobe Lightroom, download a plugin from Ricoh and it will allow you to edit that file or that photo and then stitch it together after you've edited it. So that essentially means you can edit your raw files in Adobe Lightroom. There are so many editing options. It's one of the easiest and most advanced uh, photo editors out right now. 
It does mean you have to have an Adobe Lightroom or an Adobe Suite uh, subscription. If you are a professional and you're using this professionally, that expense shouldn't be too much. I mean, it is definitely worth it. You will definitely need to have Adobe Lightroom and that plugin to be able to get the most out of this camera. And you can have a look here at what I've been doing and how I edit the DNG raw files to get the most out of this camera. I've got a few examples. I mean, when you shoot the DNG file, it comes out looking pretty much the same as a JPEG. It can be really overexposed if you don't mess with the manual controls properly. You can get things wrong, uh, very bright, very overexposed, but Adobe Lightroom and the DNG raw file, the data in there allows you to get so much more out of it, allows you to completely change what the photo looks like and get a very, very high quality photo. So yeah, I mean, you can see here the difference between the two. It's quite stark and it's really easy to do, guys. I mean, even if you've never used Adobe Lightroom before, you've never used any of the Adobe programs, you can just mess around with those uh, sliders at the side. Uh, mostly I lower the highlights and lower the and raise the shadows and that basically brings out all the details. There are so many details hidden and yeah, it's really not difficult. So um, yeah, you don't need to worry about a, a steep learning curve because there really isn't one. It's those three things that I think make this camera awesome for 360 photography, particularly for professionals who just need a quick turnaround, who want an all-in-one system. This does deliver 360 photos, reasonably close in quality to a DSLR, but it's not as good as a DSLR, it's really not. I mean, I can show you some photos that I've taken with a DSLR, some 360s that I've shot uh, for virtual tours, etc., and for like clients, and the quality is so good, um, you can get out of a DSLR, obviously because the sensors are so much bigger, better. However, the issue is that it takes such a long time, and it's a lot of work, it's a lot of equipment, it's a lot of editing. I mean, let me just show you what I need to do to get those kind of photos with a DSLR. You need, obviously, a camera, a DSLR, a lens, a tripod, you need an attachment for the tripod that allows it to spin around. One of these, you need a subscription to PT GUI or another thing that stitches them all together. It probably takes for each, for each um, panorama you shoot with a DSLR a good 20 minutes or even half an hour of editing time just to stitch them together. You have to take at least, I don't know, 30 different photos manually, combine them together manually to get a HDR effect. I mean, it just takes a long time to do just one virtual tour. Whereas this is an all-in-one system and it's literally just one button you push and it's done. And then you do edit it. Obviously, like I said, you need to go into Lightroom and, and edit, but that tape, like I said, is not as good as a DSLR, but it's not too far off in some situations. And, and then it's done. So the advantage of the Z1, and I think why Rico have developed it, is because it's an all-in-one system, shoots very high quality photos very quickly, quick turnaround for professionals who do not want to be messing around with uh, a long editing or shooting period. So that is the main advantage of this camera, by far an easy workflow so that's really what you want for a professional camera it's just very easy to use and let me show you quickly a nighttime virtual tour that I shot with the Theta Z1 now this took me all of 10 minutes in total to shoot the files and then it probably took me another 20 minutes to edit them and put them together and upload them so all in all around about half an hour 45 minutes of completely from zero to a full virtual tour now it's obviously not the best in the world because uh, I was not messing around with the manual controls too much. I just edited in Lightroom to try and get the maximum quality. And the fact that this can shoot decent quality photos in complete darkness. I mean, this is nighttime. None of the other cameras that I have would have been able to do it like that, this well. It would not have turned out that well. It would have been extremely noisy, basically unusable in a virtual tour in a professional sense. That's the toughest test I put it through in very harsh artificial lighting conditions and in pitch black. The only thing I would say is that these very, very bright lights do have some glare. Very, very bright lights are going to have this glare effect and that's one of the downsides of this camera. It's not going to do as well as a DSLR would. That probably wouldn't happen with a DSLR. But apart from that, I think they turned out really well. So yeah, guys, when you are shooting in low lights, this camera has many more options than most other 360 cameras and, and shooting indoors as well. Uh, it has a variable aperture, which means it has three different aperture settings. That's basically unheard of in other 360 cameras. They're usually stuck in one aperture, but this has three different apertures and that allows you to have a lot more control over how much light is going into the lens. And therefore in different situations, you can adjust that to improve the quality of the images. And like a DSLR, you can control basically every aspect of the camera uh, from shutter speed. You can go full manual control, shutter speed, aperture, ISO. You can control all of that to a very specific point as you would a DSLR. And I think that 
opens this up to a lot of creativeness as well and not necessarily going to be that useful for some professionals but if you wanted to in uh, if you wanted to try out different environments you can create some very artistic photos as well as professional ones there's a facebook group that i run the rico theta z1 and v user group and i've seen some people using this camera already and shooting some really artistic photos i mean take a look here uh, this guy is so good like check him out he shoots some really artistic photos using manual controls i mean this one um shot on the top of a rooftop in new york i think is stunning and you would really struggle to get that quality from any other camera out right now unless you were paying like literally thousands or you were using a DSLR. I'm gonna be practicing with this camera. To be honest, it's been raining in London for the past, I guess, week or so, so I really haven't gone out and shot that many low light photos, uh, and I'm gonna do so in some really cool locations in London. So yeah, I will do another video basically purely about low light or nighttime photos with this camera because I think that's where it's going to be really creative. Now let's say you didn't have Adobe Lightroom and you don't want to download Adobe Lightroom and you don't want to mess with that, you think it's not worth your time, it's too complicated. There is another option thankfully that the Theta Z1 has for you and that is the automatic HDR mode which I think is really good. Basically the camera shoots three exposures, one after the other, lights, normal and dark and combines them together automatically to create a HDR photo and I've shot a few here you can take a look at what they look like it is definitely much better than just shooting a single exposure and it means you don't really have to do much editing or any editing at all really it will just improve the quality of the photo it will have that HDR effect and that is done all in one straight out of the camera you get a JPEG that looks like that the downside is that you cannot be moving at the time or nothing can be moving around the camera because it will be blurred now this is not the perfect camera as um, I mean that's probably what I come across as saying, but it's really not the perfect camera. There are some downsides, I'm not gonna lie. The memory is set at 19 gigabytes. There is no option to expand. I cannot see an SD card slot. I don't know why. It's 2019. Why is there no SD card slot? Hello? I, but I mean, I've seen fridges with micro SD card slots, so I really don't see um, why, Rico, why you couldn't just fit one in there. But I mean, I kind of understand because if you're gonna be using this in a professional setting, you're not gonna be keeping loads and loads and loads of photos and stuff on here. You're gonna go out and do a job, use the photos, then delete them. And then I guess 19 gigabytes is more than enough for you know, a couple of jobs or, a, you know, several hundred photos, really. Also, the battery is non-removable. So when you run out of battery, you need to bring a charger or you are screwed. The battery lasts around about an hour. Um, and I found that to be quite accurate. It's not the longest lasting battery in the world, I'll be honest. So yeah, bring a charger. Thankfully, the battery uh, is displayed here on the little screen, which is what the last version was missing, didn't have a screen, so you'd be able to see how many photos you can take, uh, how much memory you have left, and how much battery you have left, so you won't be left guessing. Now this is also a video camera, like it can shoot videos as well as photos, and I've shot a couple of videos with this camera, but to be honest, this review is 90% focused on photos, because I think that's what 90% of people are going to use this camera for. But here are some videos shot with the Theta V, no, it's not the V, it's the Z1. So here are some videos shot with the Theta Z1, and they are looking good, uh, it's limited to 4K, which some people were disappointed with, I guess 5K is now considered, I guess, the bare minimum for decent... I guess in people's minds, that's what the uh, minimum should be. However, even though it is just 4K, the fact that it has much better lenses than most other cameras means that the quality is actually pretty good. Uh, the, the dark areas are very dark and no noise. The dynamic range is very good. The colors are bright. There's no like fuzziness. I don't know. I just think the quality is very good. But I think this is actually a better video camera than most other uh, 360s out right now. So it's gonna, I guess, depend on what your priorities are. It's definitely not meant for video. I mean, there's no stabilization or there's very limited stabilization. Not Nothing like you would see in like the Insta360 cameras have that epic stabilization that this camera does not have that. So you will not be using it as an action camera. You will not be riding your bike with it and putting it on a surfboard and stuff like that. So don't bother. Uh, that's not what this is for. It's meant to stand still and take the photos and the videos. So to bear that in mind. So guys, I guess that's Ooh, my eyes are very big. So guys, I guess that's it. Uh, I have pretty much gone through everything I know about this camera. Like I say, I've just been using it for about a week and a half, I think. And I have really enjoyed using it. 
I think there is so much potential. I think I hope that I've shown you at least the quality you can get from this camera and the editing potential and the potential to use it professionally and the potential for professionals to have a high quality all-in-one 360 camera that is very easy to use and a quick turnaround. It is definitely the best sub $1,000 camera for shooting 360 photos without a shadow of a doubt. And it is probably better than most other more expensive 360 cameras as well, professional ones, and is certainly the easiest to use by far. For estate agents, architects, professionals, uh, people who use Matterport, this is compatible with Matterport. You can create 3D, 3D uh, maps, depth maps with this as well. Um, for anyone who wants to use 360s in a, a unconventional professional sense, despite some of the cost cutting measures, so the memory and the battery, it's still, it's still the best uh, for professional use. It is really expensive, I don't deny it. It's too expensive for anyone who just wants a, if you're just an enthusiast or you just want something to shoot, you know, your vacation or shoot family gatherings, whatever, this is not the camera to get because it is just too expensive and you also need to get Adobe Lightroom to get the most out of it. So it's a lot of money. But for businesses who can afford it, this is the one to get. That's it guys. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe. If you want to see more from this camera and others and other 360 stuff, Yep, subscribe and I'll bring that to you. So any questions, feel free to comment. But until next time, I'll see you around. Bye.